Hey everybody, I'm Emily Moyer from Off Planet Radio and I'm here with my good friend Danny Katz and this is Words with Danny, episode number four. And neither of us have any idea what's going on because we're so <laughs> trying to figure out if this is actually the reality that we live in. And I've determined that if you just turn the TV and the computer off, none of it exists and Danny's still kind of in it and trying to. <laughs> yeah, Emily has opted to avoid it. I'm just in like transpersonal empath shock, like shaking that this is how people are. You're saying you're a trans person? Ran. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Yes, I'm. So, I'm, I'm have, have you not seen me, me being criticized for being cisgender like yeah. nine trillion times? <laughs> Let me turn the, oh, the microphone is on. I was making sure the microphone is on. Um, so yeah, so because I'm avoiding reality and she is steeped in it, she will tell me about reality and I will see what I have to say about it. I don't know how steeped in it. I will say I have avoided 3D Matrix since Friday because um, because it's scary and I, I can just feel it. I can feel it vibrationally. <laughs> the rage is seeping through yeah. the atmosphere. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I just turned it off and I don't pay attention. So let's hear it. I get it. So, um, like, but I mean, you spend some time on the computer and on Facebook and Twitter. And I spend not... some time on the computer. So this is how I've seen, I'll just give you the progression of my limited exposure. Cause like, like you, I, I am extremely limited in my exposure, but I am on the computer more than you since you're on a total blackout these days. <laughs> so, um, I'll just, I'll just lay the groundwork. So I'd heard a, a lot about the Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh nonsense. The Kavanaugh nonsense thing. thing. Right. And I hadn't tuned in to really like hear him or her or whatnot. The first time I heard him, just, just for full transparency, the first time I heard his testimony, I'm like, well, I don't really know the details, but this looks like a guy, this sounds like, feels like someone who's telling the truth and feels like his life is on the line. Then I heard her speak like a bit trembling baby. And I was like, I don't even know what I'm watching, but this <laughs> didn't happen and this is absurd. So the, from my exposure, that was sort of my sense. And then there was like, all the articles that went back and forth between us about the backstory and the Stanford research and the yeah, CIA yeah, 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 and the yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so I've just stayed chosen to stay out of it because I've never seen such hysteria. Like it's gone to like, you know, orange alert times a million. Overnight. Yeah. So they did 9-11. Yes. Yeah. More Ooh. so though. Yeah. So it's like a super social cultural 9-11 as opposed to like a, like a nation patriot, you know. I mean, they're like, still engineered yeah. by like nefarious it's powers. A that it's eat. still a false flag. It's still a false. It's totally still a false it's flag. It's still a false flag and a hoax and has holographic planes and directed <laughs> energy weapons and all that stuff. All of those things, but the but the like the trauma meter that's been clicked on is like off off the chain. So what happened was I'd been staying out of it. I really didn't know what was going on. And on Wednesday, I saw a friend's. Facebook post, which was like, um, it's absurd to purport that men are afraid right now. And then it was like several inches of like rape statistics and assault statistics and like the buzz toxic masculinity and privilege and entitlement. And then the end was like, so I'm sorry, men have no idea what fear is. And I was like, it struck me as weird because this very friend of mine called me in tears like two months ago when her absolute best friend was accused of rape from a former student at the art college where he taught. She had already graduated. She had texted him to see if he wanted to get a drink, had sex with him, woke him up the next morning to have sex again, and then a week later reported it to the police as rape. So this happened and this very friend who posted this called me in tears about this whole situation only a few two months, months ago. ago. Yeah. Okay. So she didn't believe her then. Right. So no, now, now and, somehow now we must believe her. Well, oh, she totally didn't believe her. And also she was heartbroken for her friend and that his career was on the line, his reputation was on the line. Like this was all very real. So she posts this thing, men can't possibly be afraid. And I was a little thrown off and I'm not tracking this particular story. And so I posted, um, can't they coexist though? Like I was really careful. I'm like, isn't it possible, you know, can't men have their own experience of fear while women are having their own flavor of fear? Her response was, no, I don't think so. And then it was just this insane dog pile on what an insensitive asshole I am and can't, you know, I should have given her her safe space and I'm infringing upon it. And the only correct response to a courageous post like this is, <laughs> is for me to shut up. And it was just dog pile on me and totally backing it. And I'm like, 
I don't know. I literally, it was well, such kind of like the, It's kind of like that yes. senator, that congresswoman from Hawaii, the Maisie set brother, who's like, the only thing for men to do at this point is to shut up and step up. So it was like the same thing, but you're it's not a man. It, it is exactly yeah. the same thing. The, the, like, the court of public opinion or individual iterations of it have decided this is the appropriate etiquette for response now, and there's only one answer, which is fucking crazy. So, um... And but, you and you at this point didn't know about the fact that Trump had made this. Right? No, I didn't know because so that right. was the thing was it was complete cognitive dissonance where I was like, "Tell say, say, say what happened because we might know what we're talking about." Okay, so um, so the next day I found out that Trump had said in a speech, a few "Young days men." Before. The, the day that she posted it, okay. it was on a Wednesday. Right. Apparently that morning, Trump had said, "Young men are afraid." That's what caused the whole thing. I didn't get that information until the next day, but I, it had me. The dissonance is like, I've watched all my girlfriends go crazy this past 10 days. It's basically what this is all about, where I'm like, wow, where we used to have different opinions, but we could still hold a space of like peace and diplomacy. I've watched everyone go off the deep end and, and I could, watching it with her and like, so we're rewriting history. This didn't happen to your friends. This is so weird. And then understanding, oh, because Trump said that now like that button has been pushed, like insert automatic psycho reaction that 100% of everything comes out of Trump's mouth is caused for psychotic meltdown. I wonder if the word Trump is an actual mind control trigger. I At wonder, this point it is. But it's become that. But I'm wondering if that, like, so are you Trump card? Are you familiar with like the new, the Illuminati card game? No. Right. And so like the Illuminati card game was this thing that like was, came about in like the late 80s, okay. right? That has basically predicted everything that has happened. It's even predicted like Ron Paul and Alex Jones and 9-11 mm -hmm. and all these, all these false flags and all these things that have happened in the world, like there's a card for them. And there is a Trump card, right? And Trump, there's just that social term, the Trump right, card. Right, there's always a Trump, Trump card, card in every So day. like, I'm wondering if like, you know, he's been present in our minds since the mid 80s as a popular figure. Right. Right? So I'm just wondering if like, I mean, we should, it would be an interesting test just to, like, push a button and have the word Trump said and see what happens to somebody's nervous. Well, of course. I mean, absolutely, yeah. I think. Uh, I'm telling you what the results of your test would be. Right. Yes, that, that is, at this point, like, th those, the response of, like, psycho meltdown is inextricably bound to the vibrational frequency of the word. We Trump. talked about that when you were on our show, the way something's like, the, yeah, the mouth is like a cathedral and the way it vibrates. Sure, sure. because yeah. I'm watching my friend and we had this actual experience with her best friend yeah. and something clicked over in her brain where that never happened. Right. <laughs> and now this is the world. So it also acts as a, like a mind erase. So this really, we're dealing with the mind control of like amnesia and then triggered behavior. Exactly. And then wow. the, the audacity of like, because women are afraid, now they have like exclusive rights to the emotion called fear. fear. And any man Which who fear, says he has fear right? is a liar. And so some <laughs> a toxic so some masculine people. oppressor. So have liar. you ever heard like the mnemonic where, where fear stands for false evidence appear, appearing real? Yes. So that is what we're actually dealing with here is false evidence appearing real. It doesn't, it doesn't even, even appear, appear real, real but they're thinking it does, <laughs> right? Like in their head. So like it's okay. so twisted and make like this whole story is so manufactured. It's so forced it's and so distorted. Forced. It is <laughs> crazy. Yeah. To, it is just, I know you and I are the same on this, where it's like there's not an ounce of veracity to any part of it. It's so badly pasted together. It is really bad. But it's been so effective in making people go ballistic. Yeah. It, it is, it is, um, you know, and we talked about they're going ballistic for all the wrong reasons. A hundred percent the wrong yeah, reasons. There's, there's actually like, I mean, I have found a happier life and not going ballistic anymore, right? But that doesn't mean that my logical brain can't see that there are reasons to, there are, that there aren't reasons to go ballistic. And, and so now we have this situation where like, now we have a problem because we do have a criminal in the Supreme Court. Right. right, but if we'd focus on right. his criminal aspects, if we'd right. focus on the actual facts of, of, of his history and where his allegiances have been and the actions that he's taken, if we right. focus on the facts at hand, then the, the people might have taken it all more seriously. But because the women went crazy over a unicorn fairy story, <laughs> badly told, and became so like righteous 
in their ridiculousness, I feel like they backed everyone into the corner where the everyone was like, "Fuck you!" You well now, 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 well, now there's a lot of people who want him because he they, they because they don't right. So there's all because they like, want to piss off the lefties, right? So when they, right. no one should want him. No one should want him. Like this, like that's the whole you know. So. I mean, the problem is, is that neither, they made it ridiculous. neither the Republicans nor the Democrats and certainly not the media care. They, they are enemies of freedom. Right. And so they're, they're interested. Like I could, I could even buy a story where the right and left colluded to get this man who's an enemy of freedom into, into it by creating this storm around it to make the fight about something that is real. So now everybody, like, it's been proven publicly that nobody actually cares about the fourth amendment. They care more about finding out if somebody grew up someone in high school so the Fourth Amendment be damned, we have somebody on there who's an enemy of freedom in every way, who wrote the Patriot Act, who believes in torture, like, who, who doesn't believe in the Fourth Amendment, who thinks open surveillance is okay, all this kind of stuff. If we could have kept the conversation on those things, I think it would be infinitely less likely that he's there now. As far but then as that would open a discussion for the problem again with those things, and neither the left nor the right want that because they both believe in all those things. Ex exactly. Yeah. Oh, but it's it's such a bummer just to see the left and women drive this forward so mindlessly, like let themselves be so controlled and manipulated. And I know that your theory is that like it was a left right collusion to put him there. So they create this story. Emily, this story is so lame and so, so flimsy lame. and so nothing. But they so could have put everything. anyone in there with zero collusion and come up with something better, right. probably. But, but at this point, like we've moved into this phase of revelation of the method, and the method is to mock the people while you enslave them. And that's what this is. Like These people asked for this. This is what they're going to get. They begged for The people begged for this. And so this is what they're going to get. Ha ha. But that's it. That's how they feel. But we're the pe the problem is is that we're all the people. Like the problem right. is we're being shoved into this police. Like can we? It's been my issue from the get go. Can we talk about what's really going on? Can we talk about yeah. being caris? You know, like herded into camps and police state. But and maybe like maybe this is just like you know before we start recording, you and I were talking about there's like this separation going on, right? And you know, like maybe maybe like maybe. Maybe it even works like this. Maybe to avoid all that, all we're going to have to do is walk away. And these people who can insist on continuing to go into the city and go like every day and protest in the streets and march and whatever, like there's going to be police take there. And those of us who just wander off and don't care, maybe it's not going to be. I mean, it's possible and I'm, hey, I'm open to it and I'm, I'm totally availing myself to that reality. But is it also like a coincidence that this week that all of a sudden that like ridiculous the criticism not, of my blogs on the front page is page one of my Google search because that's not like that fucks with my ability or that has the potential to fuck with my ability to make a living, to have a platform. Right. So th I think, I think the whole thing is that, you know, so I'm not saying what I was saying. I'm not saying that I completely believe what I just said. I was just offering that as like a possibility. But, but I do believe that if we live into these possibilities, right. so let's leave is. into it. So exactly. I think some of this is that like those of us, who are reliant on the matrix to make our living, right? Like, I think, like, like those of us who have these recognitions, these awarenesses, we're going to have to start separating ourselves further and further from the matrix and the way we make our living. Well, that goes back to, like, the whole Derek Bros, like, like, gray market and black market. Right. And I agree with all that. This is part of the larger conversation, conversation of deplatforming, content creators and this does involve both you and I right um which is this push from the left to deplatform content creators who aren't parroting right the retard narrative right um I'm sorry people are going to freak out that I said retard narrative um <laughs> the let's steal your every freedom narrative because your feelings got hurt when you were 13 right or whatever it is yeah so I mean I think just you know you're dealing with Google, which Google is, you know, so just so you guys know, she, Danny had a thing happen this week where she, for a random reason, Googled herself. <laughs> and what came up on, one of the things that came up on the first page, like, didn't make any sense why it was there. It was somebody else's current commentary on an article she had written 40 years ago. Right, and it didn't have very many views or anything like that. It didn't make sense why it would be on the first page, it, but it was. Yeah, it made no sense. It was nothing, it wasn't, there was no heat on this. It wasn't timely. Like I've in the past four and a half years, I've had a zillion more relevant things, but this article or this criticism that's on the first page calls me 
a hate monger, calls me a homophobe, calls me a transphobe, like all of those keywords that slander people. And we already established that she's a trans person, and so she's not. <laughs> right? I'm kidding. But, uh, you know, not, but the point is, is that there's something going on with the algorithm. The algorithm's fucking with The you. algorithm is, there's something in the algorithm to make the shaming of people who are opposing a mainstream narrative in any way rise to the top. Without the actual article she wrote was not at the top, but somebody's criticism like, of her is at the top, right? Right, and it was like on somebody's private blog. It didn't some like random blogger, yeah, yeah, exactly. So like, but that's the issue is that like you know we've become dependent. Google is the matrix, like that's the point of Google is to be evil, right? right? I, they, everyone tells you like they <clears throat> say they're you know they're not you are all that kind of stuff, you know like they're funded by DARPA and you know like they, all that kind of stuff. They're very intertwined with the government. So like, yeah, it's not surprising that they would do that. They're trying, you know, they're recognizing you as an enemy combatant and they're trying to say, if you want to be on the reservation, step in line. If not, get off the reservation. Right. Right. Yeah. So this is an issue when it comes to like, is it as simple as just stepping away? And we can sort of keep that, um, we can sort of keep that possibility open as something to look into, but it's also a very real consideration, this deplatforming conversation that's going on on the sidelines and being like, you know, this is what the whole free speech conversation is about right now. But people are so quick to say, like, Alex Jones is a hate monger or it's an alt-right extremist or, you know, like the data in society. Like, even if he was that, who cares? Well, of course, who cares? <laughs> but, like, this is the push that we need to be aware of because right. now that he's been taken off, like, the precedent By the way, I think, it's, I think it's staged. I think I think he's in on it. <clears throat> I, think, I think that, you know, he, it, this is, something to get people to be nervous about losing their platform, so to get them to step into line. But then how does that explain the data and society report that they just put out? I don't, I'm not connecting those two things. I'm saying like that Alex Jones has been in collusion, in my opinion, with intelligence agencies and corporations that are, that work with intelligence agencies and the government for a very, very, very long time. I buy that. Yeah, and that, you know, they, they don't want to have to go about directly censoring people because if you get too many people, then people are going to get mad and fight back. So you were saying this is like a scare tactic to get people to self censor People don't want to lose their Twitter accounts or their PayPal processing. Mostly, like, right? So like, they, did, they did this like slow drip with him, and then the last thing that just happened is he got he can't process through PayPal anymore. Right, that was the right? So people, like, where you can get people to change their behavior by threatening their way of making a living. So rather than telling people you can't say something. This is like a giant warning. It's a giant to warning. Everyone else. It's a giant warning. Okay. And I guarantee Maybe. you, like, he's been paid a lot of money to do this. Like, where did his super fancy studio come from over the last several years, right? His well, he has a huge audience. Huge following, but, like, he's had a huge following forever, and then just over the last couple of years, suddenly there's a huge studio that's getting better and bigger and better all the time and all this kind of stuff, and, you know, or whatever it is. Like, he's a, he's a made man. He's a company right. man, okay? And so um, the data society thing, I think that's just another thing. It's another warning. It's like, look, look guys, we're letting you know that if you in interview these people, if you, right, like, if you, like, they were trying to uh, deter people from having <clears throat> conversations with someone, because, like, oh, like, if you saw, like, Tim Pool's videos on it, he's like, I don't even know any of these people that they're saying that no, I, I mean, it was so badly put well, together. He, what he's was, saying is that how he figured out they made this connection is that, like, he had at some point been on a show with somebody who also at some point had been on a show with them. Yeah, they were right. beyond so reaching. So what they're basically trying to say is we don't want you communing with the other camp because you might find that someone in the other camp has a point that is valid or if you if you can let your bullshit down for one second right. and sit and listen, but oh, okay, I don't agree with that, but it actually makes sense and it doesn't really bother me that they do that so we can coexist. Can they you imagine if people would let their bullshit down and listen right now? Like, really, like, right. how amazing that would be if people could just listen. Right. That would be fantastic. Well, it's, it's really hard to listen when you're uncomfortable. Like, the whole point, like, you know, like, to stay, like, when you're in conversation with somebody, like, really the best way to have a conversation is to, like, sit there on the mat, face-to-face, -face, looking at each other, and be able to be uncomfortable and stay on mat. But everybody gets so reactive and, like, can't stand to be in the, you know what I mean? Like, they just jump off right away and don't ever develop a rhythm for conversing that actually allows you to get to some place where you can solve something. Well, that's also because they don't have the intention of listening from the get-go. It was like we were talking about before, like, um, Bill Maher and Steve Bannon, like Bill Maher was not interested in, in hearing 
Bannon on any level. He wasn't interested in understanding. He was interested in like shaming and like spewing his emotion on him and letting him know how much he was, didn't like him. He was interested in virtue signaling. signaling. Exactly. Yeah. But it wasn't like, let me see what this guy has to say and where can we go with this conversation right. that's interesting. And it's that willingness and that openness that like isn't really being demonstrated. But going back to, okay, the, we, we knew we were going to be all over the place. But we're, we're all over the place. We're, we're aware we're of We're all over the place. We, we don't need any notes letting us know we're all over the yeah. place. Which is <laughs> kind of the random energy of that. the day. Yeah. Um, Venus is retrograde. retrograde. We have new moon tomorrow. Yes. We have various other girl things happening. So, um, <laughs> but what you mentioned about data and society and like, this is a warning. So I've the Eric Weinstein, and I know you're not as, as high on the IDW as I have been in the past, but even as I started to sort of like intellectual dark web, <laughs> um, even as it's my scam, even as my crushes started to fade a little bit, um, I still like had a. Danny has a thing for ugly Jewish men. No, and it just kind of <laughs> made crush on Eric Weinstein. Right, ugly Jewish man, brilliant. Well, and Majid because he's so sexy. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's <laughs> sexy. Imagine him while he's sexy. Yeah, yeah. Majid is just I just totally objectify him because as eye candy. But um, <laughs> yeah, Eric Weinstein like has been on this for sure pedestal for me. But then his last Ruben show, which just sucked on a lot of levels. Um, David Rubin. Dave Rubin is not Dave like, Rubin? Rah, rah, rah. Yeah, he's gotten really boring. Um, did, I, I, did I just call him a different name? No, you called him Dave Rubin. Okay, okay. it's that kind of day. But, um, but he said, he was like, well, if you speak your truth these days, like it is absolutely life ruining. And I was like, why are you t programming everyone? Yeah. And so in that moment, he just told everyone, not to if you're going to speak your truth, you are going to 100% have your life ruined. And I, it, you know, with my language thing, it like my whole body contracted. And that's and I was actually like, cancel clear. That is actually a hundred percent opposite of what's of reality. Well, it's, it's, this is like when you said the thing about Alex Jones and that being a giant warning. That's what popped into my mind. I'm like, oh, because he's doing the same thing now. And then he tweeted something else that was like, well, you know, where's and our savior? Funded, like the intellectual dark web, in my opinion, is funded by the same shit Alex Jones is funded by. Well, I'm starting to think that they APAC, are Israel lobby, Stratford, all pro Israel. I don't know enough about it, but I do know that there's zero criticism for Israel and there's like 100% backing for Israel yeah. on the IDW. I can't say 100%, but it does seem like 98. that's the majority. 98. <clears throat> but then after the um, the Kavanaugh nonsense thing on Friday, Wein Eric Weinstein posted like um, something, I'm paraphrasing, but something along the lines of like, where's our magical healer to save us? And I'm like, are you really like, Right now, today, this news day, now you're putting forth our old religious savior narrative into right. everyone's consciousness, and that like we can't save ourselves. Like Eric, what do you? What happened? But, uh, that's, what that's, that's, that's the biggest program that they want. People, they want people under savior programming all the time. Of course, because then we yeah. won't be proactive, and we yeah. won't. We'll just sit around whining about our problems and like jerking off about how smart we are from all the different angles. We circle, talk about circle, our circle, 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 self-contained flatulence. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And we're not talking solutions. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So and he's friends with Peter Thiel and all that kind of well, stuff. Well, he works with Peter, Thiel, yeah. with Peter Thiel. And I'm very curious as to why Peter Thiel well, has Peter just relocated here to L.A. And I believe Weinstein followed him, which is all the more like... Well, and uh, Peter Thiel's scariest thing that he does is Palantir, which is future predicting software. Mm -hmm. Right? And so put out, have, so Brett Weinstein say that, see how people respond to it, right? Then know what to do next. Your next move is going to be this. Your next move is... All the, watch how people are responding to the intellectual dark web. How much truth do you have <laughs> to give them? How much can you still hold back? What, what nooks and crannies do you have to open for discussion? And what doors can you keep shut? Mm -hmm. That's what Palantir is for. I'm so creeped out. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that, but then there we'd open up a whole new window for. Her. <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. right? <laughs> okay, so so I just want to go back to the cabin nonsense. I don't even know what to do with that. Just to pick up the other trails of it, so we can tie it on, tie it up, <laughs> tie it on, <laughs> pick a direction, <laughs> tie it in some direction, and move on. Um, which was seeing all of the celebrity women's response to it and and because what I'm watching is the narrative that's being spun and the gist being that like a culture is enslaved by their narratives they're shaped by their narratives it's all the myths like we just live our mythologies and the myth mythology that's being written around this me too cabin nonsense whatever is so flimsy and lame 
and illogical and nonsensical. And I heard so many women say <clears throat> they had all their like ridiculous reasons. And it was like, if you vote for Kavanaugh, you hate women. <clears throat> that logic stands up nowhere right. on no dimension ever, ever, ever. It, it is not true. It's ridiculous. I don't care how loudly you say it or like how pretty you look when you say it, or if you're right. on some late night talk show, it's actually not true. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Right. I mean, like, so clearly like most of the Republicans who voted for Kavanaugh, like the reason that they're voting for Kavanaugh is because they believe in a police state. And they know he does. Right. right. And actually hate to break it to you lefties, but most of the Democrats believe in a police state too, especially at this point, because they've lied about so much shit that they need a police state to hold their shit together. Which is why the yeah. New York Times editorializes the way they do and Washington yeah. Post. That's why everyone is manipulating your news is because they don't give a shit about your freedom. Like get it already. Right. So like, so that's the reason that Republicans voted for Gavin. They, like they don't, whatever. He touched it's not because he they hate women. Right, yeah. The narcissism of the way this story is written that like, that all these people who are choosing the Supreme Court justice, their number one consideration is whether there's any veracity to a woman's feelings about her high school assault. Like, it's crazy to me that women could, with a straight face, right. believe that that's how these decisions well, and also are being how, made. How flimsy it was that, like, she got up there and she, like, she couldn't even, she didn't even align her witnesses before she said it, right? Because all Because no one backed her. No one backed her. So, but I actually think that's intentional. Like, I don't think there was ever any intention of anything being proven of, and this is about like, can we actually like get people all whipped up over absolutely nothing? Right. And the answer and is can yes. we actually, so it's like a social experiment. It's a social experiment. Like it's a piece. It's like how dumb are people and how much they're, control they're can mocking, we it's the mocking like, we've yeah. been talking about. We're, like, we're, we're, it's completely like, oh, look at you fools. Like you just completely let us run you around rough shot for a month with no evidence, right? And everything is about like um, believing her, right? Like thinking, like, do you believe her or do you believe him? Guys, said it before, say it again. Belief is the enemy of knowing. And the only way you ever know something is evidence, right? And so there is no evidence. So this is all they have. Ha Anytime you have to hashtag something, you, like, it's, it's almost, not true. It's almost, <laughs> it's almost like, it's almost like the pound sign, like somehow does the thing that like no, normally knowing would do, right? Like it's if, code for mind control at this point. At the this hashtag point. is mind control yeah. me too. Mind control yeah. black lives matter. Mind control separation program. X. Mind control walk away. Mind control all that kind of stuff, right? So it's because you're not really walking away. You're just walking to the other side of the pen. You're staying in the same yeah. page. So <laughs> yeah. So that's <clears throat> okay. So Kavanaugh. going back to. Just tying up the rest of the Kavanaugh nonsense, which neither of us believe. Apparently, we need a really big tie. <laughs> well, just because I want to go to my Lady Gaga thing, because I had brought it up yes. with you the week before, which was before A Star Is Born launch, and she gave her ridiculous. Apparently, there's a new movie with Lady Gaga. I didn't know. I, I hear it's really good. I liked the uh, Barbara Streisand version. Mm. Anyway, um, with Chris Christopherson, but that is neither here nor there. Um. I saw the Lady Gaga documentary a while ago, and I was struck by what a pathetic, whiny victim she is from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And how, for such an empowered and successful um, star with like such an interesting career, that that's not what she focused on or talked about in the documentary. The documentary was only about like a dead aunt that she'd never met and made an album for, and like, a hip problem and like sad, sad, my life is so hard, feel sorry for me, feel sorry for me. And I was like, oh, what an interesting way to like indoctrinate the public with the victim story right. that is driving everything. And then I was thinking, and I brought this up to you about when <clears throat> Madonna put out Truth or Dare, which was like, this was Lady it's Gaga's right. version, where she was so empowered and she right. was such a badass and there was nothing victim-y in that even when she did go to her chiropractor she was like laughing the whole time and Warren well, Beatty was even, making jokes even about when she talked there. about like her mother dying when she was a kid she was basically talking about how that really like is the driving force of why she is what she is now right right how it fueled her fueled her and and she did talk about some of the difficulties with her father and stuff like that but it wasn't it was like these are the circumstances of my life part of my story here I am right but it wasn't any it wasn't like when I feel bad for me when yeah I've never gotten that vibe so I was just comparing it as far as like the larger cultural meta narratives and how in the 80s with Madonna it was like 
women were very empowered and like the shoulder pads and, and like the yeah. supermodels. And it was like just a whole different, there wasn't, you know, women were empowered and women, you know, did have it, you know, they had that attitude yeah. and a lot of confidence. Yeah. And I was just comparing that to now with this lady. You think about those other things. like, like late seventies, eighties kind of women, like your Chrissy Hine and your Pat Benatar and your Madonna and all that stuff. There were so no ones big. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Cindy Lauper. Cindy Lauper. Like there's tons of Blondie. Them. Andy, yeah. Deborah it goes Harry. on and on and on. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, and all those women had stuff happen to them. Like Deborah Harry had a world. She got picked up by Ted Bundy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But she, like, right. she didn't ever talk about it until many, many years but later. Like, and and the the Carlisle and the Go-Go's. It's yeah. all like, and that gave us the energy and the impetus to like, oh, yeah, I, wanted, I wanted to be confident. Madonna so bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I was just comparing those narratives and the like the, the, the agents of the larger the larger meta programming machine and the mind control machine because I did see Lady Gaga on Friday night <clears throat> explaining to the world how trauma works in the brain um, and selling the Kevin Onsen story so she more and more oops. can you explain that she uh, I mean it's not even that interesting she was on some late night show and in this very like with so much passion was explaining how trauma works in the brain and, and it was how she was explaining why the Ford person sounded like a five-year-old. So basically she was explaining compartmentalization and MK ultra mind control, but, but making it sound like, Oh, but this is why we should believe her exactly. instead of like, like Oh, actually really this is a mind control it. program and this is bullshit. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. The way we're seeing all the celebrities sell it because the celebrities are the people who tell everyone what to think. Right. And it seems to work, which is so, Nuts. Right. Um, so that's kind of all I wanted to say about that. I wonder, like, if you broke down the word celebrity, what are we dealing with? Like, oh, the etymology? The etymology of celebrity. Uh, Maybe that will be the after segment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's we're do gonna, that. Yeah. Like, like there that. will be an after segment for the patrons, and so we're going to deal with a little of that. Maybe yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. celebrate. Right. That doesn't help our cause. Right. But, but truth is the cause, so yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll look it up. We'll okay. get it. Um, so the other thing that I want to talk about was the Louis C.K. thing. Okay. <clears throat> Because um, he came back this week, and there was this. I sent this to you. I'm put it. Um, it was from Instagram, and this is what clued me into this happening. <clears throat> this actress Zoe Lister Jones had posted this article, and it says the headline is Louis C.K. performs at Comedy Cellar again, appears to have learned nothing, um, and then she goes on to like freak out. Wouldn't you say? I mean, you read her post about it, about like this guy's sexual misconduct is over the top and the toxic masculinity and it's offensive and he's not, he hasn't been gone from the public sphere long enough and he's not apologetic enough and he hasn't lashed himself and whipped himself enough. Um, so that kind he hasn't of, been castrated. He has exactly. And he, and he needs to address it. And it's like, again, who is, who's laid out the etiquette for how people are supposed to handle their public shamings. And, I find this one particularly interesting because Louis C.K. didn't fuck with anyone. Louis C.K. jerked off in front of other people after asking if it was okay with them if he jerked off in front of them. He didn't touch them. He wasn't engaged with them in a naked way. He didn't block the door. He didn't physically restrain them. He didn't touch them at all. No. So I find it, I remember when he issued his public apology and I thought, this is overkill. Like, why are you even kowtowing to this? It's nothing to apologize for. If I'm not in, if you decide to jerk off in front of me right now and I'm not into it, I could be like, Emily, I'm, this is making me really uncomfortable. Could you stop? <laughs> or I'm going to leave. Like, yeah. I have so many options. I'm not a victim. And then I heard Joe Rogan talking about it and he was like, man, I mean, that takes a lot of balls considering what he did to all those women. And I was like, and we already know that Joe Rogan's a shill, but the reason why I'm bringing it up is because I want people to be attuned to how they're being fucking programmed and how the story is being maligned. Joe Rogan said he did what he did, he did. to all those, those women, women, which makes women victims, which P.S. isn't empowering. Like, that's why I'm not down with signing on to any of this shit, because I'm not a victim. And... Um, and so the way that he's telling this story and shaming his friend and selling him down the river because he did this to all these women when he didn't do anything, it's like sending women back to what? Like the Stone Ages? It's like, like saying women don't have legs and couldn't have gotten up and walked out of the room. Right. Like we're just, we don't have the wherewithal to take care of ourselves because we're like infantilized monkey morons who don't know how to deal. Like that's what I'm not getting about this whole thing. 
Yeah. I'm done ranting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, I mean, it is like, it's interesting, like just this reaction that people have an idea that there is an etiquette that they're allowed to impose on other people right. for how they will or will not deal with being part of society. Right. So, yeah, it's in, I find all this stuff annoying. Like, if you don't like C. Louis C.K., don't listen to him. Right, but it's, there's but also to, that. But to say that, like, it, it, yeah, it's weird. These standards, like, as gymnasts, we knew what we were being judged on. Like, your legs have to be straight, your toes have to be pointed. Like, you have to stick your landings. You can't wobble. Like, what are the what are the factors there that have determined that he did it wrong? As far as I know, he went to a comedy club and he did a set. Like, it still has to be a problem. Women still want to milk the trauma and the victimization out of this scenario. Why? What is that doing for anyone? Like, is that fun? I'm watching all my girlfriends just walk around like cortisol depleted, telomere shortening, like psychopath <laughs> freak shows. Why? I would think we need more think we light. Need light. I was just going to say the same thing. We're going to get some light. I mean, we don't have a lot of light. No. We should wrap it. We should wrap it probably. Do we have anything? I Did, mean, like, we, I, was there something we wanted to talk about about there was the binary code. Binary, the frequency fear, the either or. Um, oh, the, oh, yeah, the either or. The, okay, and this takes us back a little bit to what you were talking about, about the... Uh, can't men be afraid and women be afraid? Right, the can't men be afraid, right? Like, the can't men be afraid or, and women be afraid? Like, does somebody have the patent on, on the frequency of fear, right? It, like, the, like, that's the radio station only for women to broadcast. But I think so we were talking weird. more about the... Uh, Kavanaugh censored Trump, like people, people saying, uh, okay, if you voted for Kavanaugh, you, you hate women, women. If you or if you voted for Trump, Trump you're a racist, racist, right? And so maybe people voted for Trump because they have a small business and they don't like Obamacare. Maybe somebody voted for Kavanaugh because they love the police state, right? So we, we are locked into this way of thinking that is very either or. Either you are this, either you like women, or you voted for Kavanaugh. But either why are intelligent people buying into, it's like, okay, I get it, the mind control media manipulation machine mm -hmm. is writing this ridiculous narrative. Why are intelligent people so, relinquishing their critical so, thinking so to think say, it, yes, that's correct? Think of it like the media is casting a spell that is like a binary code for a computer where all you have is ones and zeros. So you have either this or that. There is no two. There is no something, right? So is this like part of like the transhumanist this is, Yes, this is, this is like... It, 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 an either or world is much easier to control. It's much easier to like know. You, okay, the, the the most dangerous thing to the system is someone who's free range or a free agent. Someone you don't know what they're going to do next. And if you know, if, if people know that there's only this choice or that choice, it's very easy to predict which what people are going to choose. But when you live, right. so they're trying to turn this into, but they can't actually do it. We have to volunteer to participate in an either or world when this is a both and world. But that's what's so disturbing. That's the disturbing piece is witnessing people acquiescing right. their complexity, their nuance. And really, I just realized people, it's their human. People are relinquishing humans their, their are giving over their humanity. They're layered, they're juicy, they're interesting, they're thick, they're all this we're kind of stuff. We're paradoxical, we're unresolvable. Right? you know, complexity yeah. that's shifting and changing at every moment. And this is a both and, we were talking about this, this is a both and world. Both things can be true. You can Men love, are afraid you and can, women are afraid. You can love women and believe in a police state, so vote for Kavanaugh. Exactly, right? you can love Trump and love black people. And something else too, and you can also be like a, you know, into tranny porn or whatever, right? Exactly. So, but, you know, we live in a fractal, holographic, multidimensional, constantly shifting, prismatic, kaleidoscopic kind of world that is impossible to control. The only way you can get control of people is if you limit their options. And an either or world makes it so boys over here, girls over here. One line, line A and line B. Like, is, it, is it not freaking you out to see intelligent people buy into this frequency? I, I, like, I, I, I'm alarmed. I mean, I think I've been looking at it for so long now, and because when I started to have these realizations, I really, like, I hermited, I pulled back from the world, and I just observed it, right. and I was just like, whoa, it was like, you know, like, and, and everyone thought I was crazy, right? <clears throat> but, it, you know, I came to terms with it. No, I get it. I mean, I, obviously, I've been watching it with the Trump thing, and it's been alarming, you know, in the way that it has. I think, as I said to you before, there, it's just like, the way this has sucked in, like, the women in my life who are straddling both realities, mm -hmm. who are like, 
their allegiance was to the left, but they hadn't lost it completely. And there was still some critical thinking. And I've seen this particular mm -hmm. one suck those women in. And mm -hmm. it's just like from a very human, like friend place. I'm like, Oh, so man, these people, that so sucks. this is the separating of reality that we've been talking about, yeah. right? Most people are going to be assimilated into the either or world, right? And we're going to have to pick our co-pilots and our journey mates for our both in world and go that way. And it's yeah. going to be a smaller population, but that's what it is. And so as you know, I pulled myself back and I observed all this and I felt it was crazy. And when I decided to re-enter the world, I had been going around and trying to collect the people who I know believe in a both both and universe, a both and right. world. And and that's it. And that's and so that's who I'll be with when this separation happens. And either or people will be fighting in the streets, arguing over this kind of stuff, and we're gonna have to just let them. Right. Like there you Are we gonna physically mobilize to like the same geography? Like I'm I'm more and I more feeling like that's gonna it. have to happen. It, it, yeah, mm -hmm. like not not necessarily on a permanent thing, not like where we all just go lock ourselves in a compound, but we're going to have to make places where we can come together on a regular we basis. We need our and... safe spaces. Like, we need... A... <laughs> she's but... an SJW. <laughs> 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 to go along with all the other stuff. She's a Nazi and an alt writer and a right. racist and a, a transphobe and an SJW. And also a trans person. A trans person, <laughs> right? Um, Transphobic, trans person, right? But you know, like, I mean, you, you and Sally and I are a little bit more open about it, but like, <clears throat> it's mostly friends who are like, text me secretly. Like, no one's weighing in on these threads to be like, I agree with you, Danny, men are afraid, because that is just way too incendiary these days. So it's all coming through private texts, which is weird that we, that that's like, what's so offensive to say. But then, like, my 3D friends who think this way, I have some friends, like, where we're out having coffee and we're like, we're like whispering and talking behind our hands less like any nearby SJWs think to stone us to death or something. I just say it all out loud. I, mean, <laughs> I give no shit. I am not afraid. I don't, you know what I mean? Like if that's how I'm going to go out, there'll be a blaze of glory, right? right? You know what I mean? But yeah, no, I think that's just it. I think they want you to be afraid and want you to be small. Like I'll just talk, I just say it, my normal tone of voice. I talk about SJWs out public. My own family are SJWs and I talk about it and you know, like I'm surprised I, I haven't been stoned from inside my own house. But, but the dog pals this week have gotten a lot more like vicious and like crazy. Well, I've noticed as I've been out for all my walks and runs this week, that, like all the dog walkers, all the dog walkers have like 10 dogs, right? So like the dog, like, the same people are controlling all the dogs. And so that's why it seems like the dog pile because the same trainer is sticking them all in at the same time. Yeah. Right? Yes. That yeah. is what so, is like, happening. So like they have yes. someone that they follow on Twitter and that person snaps their fingers and it's dog pile on Danny. Yeah. So symbolic in the real world. Like I've been seeing, like literally everyone, every, every dog walker I've seen this week has had like 10 dogs on their leash. Oh, that makes total sense. Yeah. The simulation's so funny that way. Yeah, the simulation <laughs> will show you, it will show you your reality in, in totally. multiple ways until you get it. Yeah. Just like your naturopath. <laughs> like, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, so, all right, guys. So this pretty much wrapped. I know we were all over the place, but it was kind of fun. I don't know. I, I had fun. Yeah. I, had, I don't know if anything <laughs> right? was trackable. Right. And also, I just want to acknowledge, like, it's such a, like, I'm feeling very, like, destabilized and uncontextualized. Like, I don't even know how to wrap myself I think that's how around people are feeling. Right so, yeah. like, be patient. You know what I mean? Some, so sometimes we'll get shows like this, but we like we enjoyed hearing the things you guys have weighed in about, uh, the criticisms and the compliments. Mm -hmm. So thank you, and we will be back in a couple of weeks with another Word with Danny. And this time, head on over to patreon.com forward slash media or patreon.com forward slash Danny Katz. Danny Katz, where you will find the bonus segment in this episode. See you next time, guys. You can find me at offplanetradio.com or for a health and wellness consultation, Facebook, Emily Moyer, and you can find her at dannykatz.com. See you next time. Bye. Woohoo!